So I'll start by saying we just did a mean demo for the video, so people don't think, why are we have all this alcohol stuff here <laughs> for the beekeeping. I wanted to talk about three products and the catalyst for why I created my three products that I want to show you about. Um, we created a solar wax melter at home, just a simple one, and it had this beeswax. And my intention was at fall I was going to do something with it. And I always wanted to make lip balm and whatever. I'm a fan of the Burt's Bees products. Mm -hmm. And said, you know, there's got to be a way to do this and it doesn't seem that complicated. So I banged it. Sorry, I'm a banger, not a Googler. Um, and if you look at these recipes, honey lip balm, melt one teaspoon of beeswax with one teaspoon of honey, add two teaspoons of almond oil, whisk well until combined, and pour in a small pot and let set. That's it. It's not complicated. So I said, well, I could do that. <laughs> um, and I did. I have to tell you the funniest part of this is as you look at it. So what I have here, and I'll show you, I'll show you the samples. This is uh, an old Smucker's jar for jelly, and I put it in. This is lip balm. This is hand cream, and these are a couple candles that we made. So the hand cream thing is a little bit different. Um, for the hand cream, the recipe is four ounces of sweet almond oil, one ounce of beeswax, two ounces of water, ten drops of vitamin E oil, and ten drops of lavender essential oil. So I, I swear to you, the hardest part of this whole thing is going to find the products. I wanted to follow the instructions, so I went to a craft store and said, well, that's where I could buy essential oils. And I looked and I found sweet almond oil, but I also found in the grocery store almond oil. So to the web to find out what the difference is. One is made of almonds and the other one is made from sweet almonds. There is a difference apparently. If you smell this one, I'll handle it around. It smells like sweet almonds are a little like maraschino cherries. It has a little bit of a scent to it. From a texture and taste standpoint, I tasted it. It's really not much different. And I've seen recipes beyond what I made that said you could just use straight up almond oil. So to do this, what I did was I, this is a double boiler. You have a pot, I don't have one. You set this in, you put the water in the bottom, you heat it on low. That's my first suggestion, right? Low, and start it from there. Now, being that it was the first time and I didn't want to burn it and I wanted to know the science behind it, I bought myself a candle making uh, thermometer. This thing goes up to some 400 degrees. And what it tells you is that wax, beeswax will melt at 157 degrees, and it starts to burn at 175. Mm. On our stove, which is the electric range, if you put it on two, and it goes two through 10, you boil the water, you put this on and you put the wax in it, and it will melt on two, and when you measured the temperature, it was 150 degrees, it was perfect, mm. right? So you don't need to crank it up to medium, you'll burn your wax. Now what I did was, I put my wax in the double boiler, and you have to be patient, and I used, this is a chopstick, and I just sat there and I stirred it until it was liquid. I think the hardest part of this was that when I went to go pour this in a container to mix it, getting it to pour consistently out of here, not pouring all over the place, is just a pain. So, while this is a great device, if you could find one that has some sort of spout or something, that would be my recommendation. So I did it this way the first time. I had a pot, and I got my ingredients set, and I poured my wax, and I used a whisk, and I put it in, and I didn't feel like I liked the consistency of it. So I did it differently the second batch, and differently the third batch, but what I ended up doing is I had two pots side by side with double boilers, and I took the quantity of wax out of the first one, and put it in the second one, and depending on what I was making, I put the water in or whatever, and I made it in the second double boiler, but I just constantly had wax over here, right? Because that's the thing, when you're making a bunch of stuff, you just want your wax sitting over here ready for you to use for whatever recipe you're using. When you mix this stuff, um, especially if you're mixing hand cream, part of what you're trying to do is take water and oil 
and wax, which is a combination of things, and get it to blend together so it doesn't separate. You'll see in my first experiments on these, this one separated a little bit, so I'll hand this around, and it's a little bit soft on the bottom. I, I don't think it's a problem, and from a lip balm standpoint, there's enough for five people to use for two years there, so um, you'll see they did separate. When I finally figured it out and started really, really, really well, so people will tell you to use a blender, um, you will get it solid like this. So this one came out perfectly. The thing that I would say to you is that when you melt wax, as soon as it cools, it's all over everything. It's hard to clean your utensils and stuff. I'm contemplating that when I do this, I'm just going to buy a kit and put it aside and use it strictly for wax and then not use my normal kitchen utensils. Uh, you can clean the wax off, but it's a little bit challenging. So this is the hand cream that we made. When you use it, it's um, you know, it's, it feels a little like Vaseline in quality, and when you rub it on your hands, it's a little bit oily, I find, but it really does work, right? And especially when it gets cold in winter and it gets dry and cracked, this stuff is really pretty nice to work with. So we made three batches of uh, lip balm, and then we made candles out of the rest. And the candle is simple, you just, there's two ways you could do this. You could put the wick in the bottom, we bought the ones with the little plate on the bottom, so they stay put, and you pour the wax in it. I will tell you, almost every time I did that, the, the wick moved around and didn't stay where I wanted it. I got smart and figured out, fill it first with wax, and while it's still liquid, put the thing in and hold it there for a second and it will stay put. You, you learn and you learn. Um, when you make your products, the point was made earlier about making mead. These jars or whatever you use, we so we spent the longest amount of time walking around looking for a little container to put that in. It's lip balm, you really only need a little one. Um, and everything you find does not, it's not food grade, right? And it tells you not to use it. We wanted to do this project in one day, so we went to the store and bought it. I am positive that you can go to the web and find supplies for this and buy it better. Um, we went to a kitchen store, we went to a craft store, They, some of them sent us to CVS or one of the, I, we went to a drug store, it wasn't CVS, looking for essential oils. So in one of these, uh, this one, you're going to find stuff floating in it. It's not bad, it's mint. What I did was I took a little essential oil or a little almond oil and I put mint in it and I crushed it and I cooked it and this should have a little bit of a minty smell to it. And it does. It smells more like wax than mint, but it does. They recommend that you can buy essential oils in lavender and there's all kinds of peppermint and stuff. I didn't have any, couldn't find any. We did find lavender, it was like a million dollars a bottle so I didn't buy it. But I happen to have uh, coconut extract. I didn't see any recipes. Everything said use a oil. I poured this in it. it. Smells really good, and when you smell the stuff, you'll smell it. I don't know if uh, extract is bad that it makes it, you know, break down or do whatever. But I didn't find a problem. So I, I would recommend you use coconut oil, wintergreen oil, whatever it is. Follow the recipe. But for the purpose of this, I was doing it really for the demonstration. I used the extract because I wanted a little bit of smell to it. Um, this is a product, you could go two ways on this. This is vitamin E. When you make the hand cream, you put vitamin E oil in it. You can buy vitamin E tablets and break them apart, or you could actually buy the oil like we did. So the hand cream has vitamin E oil. Vitamin e oil. And at one point, I wanted some smell to this hand cream. And we didn't have anything, no lavender or whatever. Um, I used Johnson's baby oil and just gave it a squirt. I figured 10 drops of that oil or this oil would give it a flavor. So when you smell this, this will smell like Johnson's baby oil. So it's really pretty simple. What I did is I brought a little uh, stick. If you want a sanitary way to do it, just take this and scrape out a little bit of lip balm and put it on your lip. and yourself to some hand cream and check out the textures and stuff and and that's it. Do note that um, 
when you make the lip balm, you mix the beeswax and honey in there. We used uh, the light flavored honey. I think again, if you use the real dark honey from fall, it might taste funny or whatever, I don't know. So we used our spring honey for that. So, any questions? Yeah, Kevin, you mentioned CBS. Were you able to find anything at CBS, essential oils or any of, any of the oils that you needed? I found tea tree oil in almost everything. Um, I did not find the oils. I, I was kind of like... Um, Would they be at like a natural food store? Yeah, we, we talked about going to Basil Bandwagon, which was an option like for us. Right That's right probably the place to go. To get a natural food store. So, the best place that we found things, believe it or not, our shop right is amazing. They had most of the stuff that we bought. Um, but essential oils like wintergreen oil and whatever, I just didn't seem to find it anywhere we went. Didn't see it. Now, you can buy it at the craft store, I won't mention the name, but it was like $20 for a vial this big. I couldn't bring myself to do it. So, if you have the I time, mean, you, can, you can find all this stuff online. You can, and that's what I said is. Look, I, I knew I was doing this demonstration and my whole purpose was one day in, out, whatever. If I were going to do this for real, make this repeatedly, I would go to the web and buy the products. So, so I'll walk you up, come on up and get a stick and try the hand cream, try the lip balm or whatever and see what you think of it. Thanks a lot, Kevin.